Since A2A recently released the uh, Piper 28-180 Cherokee, well, I wanted to fly a Piper aircraft again, so I went to the airfield to fly one. It's not actually a 180, but it's a Piper 28236, which is related to the 180. In the uh, 70s, they um, put a 235 horsepower engine into the Piper 180, and it became the Pathfinder or Piper Charger. And then they installed the uh, new semi-tapered wing on it, and it became the Piper 28236 Dakota, which you can see here. And this is the aircraft we're going to fly today. And I'm just going to show you a few things. And the main difference is it has a constant speed propeller, 230 horsepower or 235 horsepower Lycoming 0540 engine. And it looks pretty similar to, um, to the uh, older Piper, but it also has a few differences, like the uh, added window in the back. And this is the stall warning. And it's actually quite interesting, or it's, it's a very easy design. As the uh, angle of attack increases, the uh, center of pressure moves forward on the airfoil, and the stagnation point actually moves down. Thus, there's a low pressure region here, which eventually will lift this plate up, activating the stall warning. This is actually quite loose, and it's a little bit too loose, so don't wonder if you hear the stall warning going on when we are flying. Um, it will activate at around, normally it should activate 5 to 10 knots above the stall speed, but sometimes it will activate at 70 or even 80 knots. So keep that in mind, it's uh, very loose. And down here is the uh, pilot tube. And you can see the semi-tapered wing here. Actually, there are counterbalance weights, weights down here for the ailerons. I think those aren't on the Cherokee. And of course, the stabilizer. And I'm not sure if you can see the inside. All right, we'll just get into the cockpit and I'll install my GoPro and then we'll just go for a short flight. All right, I hope you get a good angle on the uh, cockpit. And I will just go through the startup and as the uh, en engine will warm up, I will uh, show you a little more details about this aircraft. But very important, fasten your seatbelts, all of them. So before startup, the parking brake is set. Prop lever on maximum RPM. The fuel tank lever is on the right tank. Both tanks are full. The carburetor heat is off. Avionics are off. And now let's prime the aircraft. The primer is actually here. Let me just see that the mixture lever moves well. Okay. All right. Parking brake is set. Propeller lever is to the maximum RPM position. The right tank is selected and it's full. Both tanks are full. Carburetor heat is off. The avionics are off. And now let's prime it three times. One, two, three. Mixture to rich, battery on, master switch on, anti-collision light on. Open the throttle a little bit, fuel pump on, it's clear. All right, let's prime it. A little more and...
to three, you should be able to hear me now on my uh, intercom, which I'm recording as well. And we just started up the aircraft, I didn't want to start up at first, so we had to prime it a little bit again. And uh, now we are ready to go. It's a EGT and CHT gauge, and it also shows us fuel consumption. All right, let's quickly go through all the uh, instrument checks. The altimeter is set to 216 feet, and the second altimeter as well. GPS database is expired on the 1st of May, so we can't use it for IFR navigation, but we won't do any IFR flying. Okay, self-test of the uh, CDI gauge. Half left, out of view, and the vertical CDI is half up, and the flag is out of view. Okay, this GPS database is expired 2008, so we shouldn't rely on that, but we won't need it anyway. And actually, we won't need a lot of GPS today at all. So, let's quickly test the autopilot. All lights are there. Now let's put it into vertical speed mode and see what the trim wheel does. Okay, trim wheel moves forward and if I push down it should move backward. Yep, it works. Alright, let's see if I can disconnect it. And that works as well. And if I trim, it disconnects as well. Electrical trim is working as well. And let's trim the aircraft a little bit to the aft, as recommended by the handbook. And we're already starting to lean the engine as we're running on on idle here. The uh, idle RPM is between 1000 and 1200 RPM. And we just want to keep it there and not to fall the spark plugs. Our gyro, the compass indicates 240 degrees, so let's set the gyro, but we'll actually do the real alignment on the runway later on. We have not only an autopilot for altitude, but also for our uh, for our normal navigation, and we'll just test it as well. In roll mode, we're rolling it to the right, goes to the right, and it goes to the left. Now center it, and now let's see if it goes where the heading back is. Heading on, and it goes to the right, and it goes to the left. And we can disconnect it. Wonderful. We won't use the autopilot today, so this is just a test to see if it works. Okay. Fuel tanks are full as set. Fuel pressure is in the green. Oil temperature is already in the green. The aircraft has been flown before today. And uh, now let's do our navigation setup. We are going to fly to essen mülheim and thereafter to Mar. So the frequency of essen mülheim is 119. 119.75 and we'll set that on standby we won't use any radio navigation so can, we can leave it at that and actually the 115.15 is selected which is the VOR of the local airport and we don't need the COM2 but we can put it on standby Taxi. As soon as I release the parking brake, the aircraft starts to move on its own. And now as soon as we completed the turn, let's completely check the brakes. Yeah, brakes are checked. And next thing to do is take our gyro instruments. We're now doing a right turn, so they should indicate a turn to the right. Turn to the right, turn to the right, and the compass also indicates a turn to the right. The artificial horizon are still not fully up to speed, it's a little bit showing a left bank. We'll see how that behaves. Light controlled. 
Downs. Up, full down. Left, and full right. Good through. And the flaps. They move symmetrically. As they should. Now we turn to the left, let's see what the giant instruments are doing. Turning to the left, turning to the left, turning to the left, and the horizon is keeping steady with a slight indication of a left bank. Alright, for our departure we will uh, climb to the traffic pattern altitude of uh, 1200 feet, join the normal traffic pattern, which is the left pattern, and once reaching the altitude we will lift the uh, traffic pattern to the south on a course of uh, 173 degrees towards S. Mülheim, our Flight altitude will be 2,100 feet, and in case of any emergency, in any, any malfunction, before liftoff, I will call on stop, cut the power, apply the brakes, inform ATC, and take the necessary actions. In case of a serious malfunction after liftoff, I'll cut the power, lower the nose, land on the remaining runway, and thereafter do the necessary procedures. If there's no sufficient runway available, we will go straight ahead with only small corrects to the left and to the right, lower the nose to get the uh, best light speed, cut the mixture, cut the electricity, land on the field ahead, and of course open the door. Actually opening the door in a, a piper isn't that a good idea, because it's part of the main fuselage structure, and if it would be open during a crash landing, or even during taxiing, uh, the structure wouldn't be full as a whole and uh, it might even shift or get some damage. Alright, we're at the holding point of runway 26. Engine temperatures are looking very good. Let's apply the button brake and see what has to be done. Okay, taxi checklist. We have checked the brakes, we have checked the flaps, we have checked the, uh, we, uh, the rudder, the autopilot is checked, the trim is set. Yep, it's set. Their instruments were checked. The altimeter is set, the QNH is 1004, and the fuel pump is off. Alright, let's do the run engine run up. Let's bring the RPM to 2000, and I'll close the window here. Okay, now let's do the MAC check. One off, drop of 100, both, back to 2000, the other off, drop 1. 25 and the maximum difference allowed is 100 uh, is 50 rpm which is good now check the cow heat rpm drop of 100 perfect let's cycle the prop and watch for a drop in oil pressure yeah it does and we just want to get some warm oil into the uh, governor that's why i cycle it a few times okay that works perfectly suction gauges and limits and the ammeter is indicating a positive charge. So, bringing it back to 1000 for idle. Before takeoff, it's on the fullest tank. The run up is checked. Flaps are set to zero degrees for takeoff. Drop lights are going on. And I see the camera dropped. I don't know when. I hope you could see some stuff. Drops are on, nav lights are not required, landing lights are going on. The fuel pump goes on, mixture is fully rich, and the transponder goes to alt. Beta for Kilo Alhalt 2, let's get off the bank started. Okay, we will have a slight left crosswind. So we'll apply full aileron deflection to the left until the ailerons come alive and then we'll reduce the deflection a little bit. There is a light heading back to set for armor heading. We are all in the green. Let's go. Take off. Power set. Engine instruments are in limits. Our speed is alive. I'm getting the rudder alive, 60 knots, and 70, and there we are, 85 knots, 
which is our best climb speed, VY. Alright. So we're currently climbing at 1,100 feet per minute. This is a very powerful aircraft. And we can actually reduce a little bit on the power to save us some fuel. And we can already start to lean the aircraft a little bit. It's not too warm today, so no worries about the temperature. Alright, we're turning left here for the traffic pattern. And we nearly reached the 1,200 feet for the traffic pattern altitude. And takeoff time was 4.3. We reach the takeoff. Uh, we reach the traffic pattern altitude and let's cut off the fuel pump and the landing light. And we're climbing at 85 towards 2,100 feet. Everything looks good. of uh, 173. We'll go for that to correct for the wind, which is actually coming from that direction in this altitude. And takeoff time was 43. All right, 2,100 feet. We'll do the level off here. Reduce power to approximately two. 21 manifold pressure and then reduce the RPM to 2100 RPM. Woo! It's quite bumpy up here. Oh, should I don't have a kilo for the simplest now. Süden, bis wieder. And we can actually lean the aircraft a little more. We have a lean assistant here which we can use. So if I now lean the aircraft we will see the temperature of the hottest cylinder and it will go up and once we reach the maximum it will actually say that we have reached the uh, okay the leanest position and we'll leave it with that I'll switch the uh, comp to S Okay, according to my calculations, my pre-flight calculations, we were supposed to do a ground speed of 98 knots here. We're currently at 100 knots, so we're pretty close with the uh, wind forecast. And uh, in around five minutes, we'll reach Aston, join the traffic pattern, and then land there. So I will soon announce our arrival on the uh, Unicom frequency. Or it's not a Unicom frequency, it's a little bit different here in Germany. There are people talking back, but there are no air traffic controllers. And due to legal limitations, you unfortunately won't be able to hear what I'm saying to them and what they're saying back. I'm sorry for them. And uh, we'll see if I can still land this airplane because I haven't flown a Piper aircraft for nearly half a year. Basically flying on Cessna aircrafts, uh, <laughs> not on the Cessna 152, which I'm, uh, uh, which I'm teaching students on to, to learn flying as I'm a flight instructor. And uh, the calculated course of 173 degrees, we're now flying 170. It's uh, working perfectly. And it's I just need a little less of wind correction, actually, to, to get there. The wind isn't that strong as thought. But 97.8 knots of ground speed, it's very close to our calculations. S. Miller with 40, Delta Echo Juliet Alpha Kilo, hello. The 
Eco Tour der Dalfa Kilo, eine Papa 28 Bravo, eine Person vor Ort, der aus Dienstland. Wir sind jetzt fünf Minuten im Norden über dem Zentrum zur Landung. Zum 25 und QNA 1004 Alpha Kilo. Alright, we just got the QNH of Essen, which is 1004. So we don't have to change anything here. And we already start our descent here at this point. Using the power a little bit. It's starting a little bit to rain, but uh, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, as I'm more reducing the power, I'll activate the carb heat, just in case to avoid any carburetor icing. And now I'm aiming directly towards the airfield so we can actually join the uh, traffic pattern for S. And it looks like a smooth flight. So there's a highway directly in front of us. I want to aim for 1,500 feet there in order to be clear of the airspace Charlie, which is directly above where the landing traffic for the Düsseldorf International Airport will be. In flight, you actually won't see the carb icing or the working of the carburetor heat on the RPM indication on the trackometer, but on the manifold pressure, because it's a constant speed propeller. It wants to keep the RPM. So the only way to actually have a measure for the power of the engine, for the power output, is by manifold pressure by measuring the absolute pressure behind the throttle valve. All right. The airfield is inside, the traffic pattern looks clear, we will activate the fuel pump and the landing light. And uh, let's just see... Yeah, I don't see any traffic in the pattern. And we'll go to the traffic pattern altitude of 1,400 feet. Even though I'm wearing headphones, it's quite loud in here. Uh, it's a big engine just sitting in front of me and uh, there's not much sound insulation and so it's very loud aircraft but hey it's a lot of power it's very comfortable to have an electric twin switch on your joke so you don't have to reach down and you have one hand free to move the uh, power levers all right we will do a landing with 40 degrees of flaps that gives us an approach speed of 72 knots, which is 1.3 times the uh, start speed. And we're now joining the downwind. There's Alpha Kilo fliegt ein in den Gegenanflug bis zur Zufall. Turned a little bit too early, the wind is coming from the south, so it actually wants to push us out of the pattern. And, uh... Oh, there's no problem. So we're in the right arc, we set the first notch of flaps. It's a mixture to full rich. Carp heat is already on. Delta Alpha Kilo und das wird ein Touch and Go. Hi, we're turning into the base leg. Taking notch of flaps. Which brings the flaps down to uh, 25 degrees. And now we have uh, 75 knots on the airspeed indicator, which is quite good. And we are very slow in reference to the ground. As the wind is now coming 
directly at us. Wind is coming from 200 degrees with uh, 7 knots as I heard. So, they'll actually have around 5 knots, 4 to 5 knots crosswind. Now let's put the prop out, prop lever to maximum RPM, so in case of a go around we can get full power out of the engine. And it's getting quite bumpy here, I'm extending full flaps, trimming a little bit down. And we're aligning with the iron weight. so that they can see us and our time was 53 there's a highway below us and uh, this is for me the visual landmark that we're clear of airspace Charlie but just to confirm with GPS yes we are clear so we can climb again put the prop lever fully forward add some power and just climb towards 2100 feet Mile has a frequency of 122000 <laughs> 122 decibel zero actually sorry so we tune them in and uh, we can, as soon as we left the area of Essen-Mülheim, we can already listen in there. And uh, let me just get out the chart for a mile, as I'm not too familiar with the traffic pattern there. I have charts for all the traffic patterns here, um, just in case. Uh, most of the traffic patterns of the airports around here I know by, uh, by heart, but uh, for a mile, as I'm not 
that off there, I uh, keep the chart with me. And in Maui, we'll actually do a full stop landing and then taxi back to the runway. All right, we reach our cruising altitude. Let's reduce the power. RPM. And then the mixture. So, uh, we didn't use much fuel right now. Um, so I won't switch the fuel tanks. The procedure in flight would be to turn on the, to turn on the fuel pumps for a few uh, seconds. We say in our flight up 30 seconds. Then to switch the tank and leave the fuel pump on for another 30 seconds before turning it off again. And this should only be done in level flight, of course, and most. Um, and it would be better to do it in not too turbulent air, especially if the tanks are low on fuel. As you can see here, if I'm not flying coordinated and turbulences are bouncing us around, it might be that the uh, intake lines for the fuel might not be covered with fuel. All right, let's switch over to mine. Should take us, according to my calculation, uh, seven minutes there. But we're a little bit slower, so I'd expect a few more minutes on our flight. Mal Info Delta Echo Junior Alpha Kilo, hallo. Delta Echo Juliet Alpha Kilo, eine Papa 28 Bravo, eine Person VfR aus Essen, 5 Minuten im Südwesten zur Landung. Zugpiste 25 QH1005 Alpha Kilo. Traffic pattern for our mile is uh, 1,300 feet, and we'll turn the downwind again and then land on runway 25. So when flying this thing around, especially in very moist air or during rain or in clouds, which we're not going to do because we're real far flight, uh, just once in a while activate the carburetor heat and see what happens. I now activate it, and actually the manifold pressure doesn't decrease, but it just increased a little bit. So we actually had a little bit of carbizing. <laughs> Could have shown it to you better. Yep. When I activated, the manifold pressure was at 20 inches. Now it's at 20.5 inches. Wonderful. So we'll leave the carb heat on for another minute or so to see if we still got some ice in there or if that's our final value. already see the airport to the left on 11 o'clock. I don't think you will see it on the uh, GoPro video. And I'm now leaving for the uh, traffic pattern altitude. Uh, there's a highway straight ahead of us and just north of the highway uh, is uh, the, uh, the downwind starts, uh, that's where the downwind starts, so we'll use that as a visual uh, reference. Ah, we just got to lose some altitude. Yeah, the uh, manifold pressure increased a little bit, so we actually had cow bias. Now let's reduce some power, we won't, don't want to get too fast. 140 knots ground speed is not too bad with some nice wind in our tail.
the airport is left of us. This is the highway to the right, and we're in a few seconds we're going to turn right into the downwind. Which is a heading of 070. Okay, traffic to pattern altitude, 1,300 feet. Let's just add a little bit of power. And again, for the landing, we'll do a 40 degrees flaps approach, full flaps, expecting a direct crosswind now from the left, at least according to the wind. A true band here, and I have to correct a little bit to the right in order to keep on the track of the traffic uh, pattern of the uh, downwind. Now there's a rail track beneath us, and just behind the rail track we are going to turn for the base. So let's reduce power, put the mixture to full reach, put the fuel pump on, landing light is still on. <laughs> Forgot to take it, turn it off. And let's lower the flaps for one notch and just turn for the very short base leg as we will now have wind from behind pushing us through the base in a very short time. Alright, order in the base. Flaps to 25 degrees. And let's put them to 30 degrees already, as we're already still a little bit high. And now in the base we have a ground speed of nearly 95 knots while we're flying, 75 knots indicated. Alright, for the landing, car speed is on, mixture is full rich, prop RPM is to highest RPM, lowest pitch. Now we're having quite a crap angle, approximately 10 degrees. Oh yeah, definitely a left crosswind. Oh, I see the wind sack. A wind suck, however you want to call it. And all this coming from uh, ahead and from the left. Approximately 60 degrees, so 80% of the wind speed as a crosswind component. a good landing at all. This was nearly a three-point landing. And also nearly a bounce landing. Not good at all. Let's clean the aircraft up, fuel pump off, carpet is off, flaps are up, and RPM is on idle. Landing time was at a zero 06. And it's really getting warm in here even though the uh, cabin heat is off. So I'll just open the window, get some fresh air. It's a 
short one way, it's not too short, we don't need to do a short field takeoff here, it's uh, 800 meters one way. So, no problem at all. We're still all in the green, we don't have to do the engine run up here. So, let's turn the fuel pump back on. Any light is already on, strokes are on, pilot heat is not required. Flaps are up. And uh, now before we actually line up for the takeoff, let's see that the trim is set. No, it's not, so let's trim it a little bit to the uh, aft position. Note down our departure time, which is one minute later. Oh, wow. Close the window. And here we go. Alpha Kilo, Roller 25, geht auf die Bahn, startet. Alright, again, crosswind, take off, run into the wind, all set, engine instruments and limits, as we do live. At 60 knots, at 70, we rotate the aircraft, disregard the stall warning. Now we're climbing out at 85. Wonderful! Very nice aircraft to fly, very easy to fly. Uh, it's very easy to fly, so you really have to be dumb to mock up the landing like I did. <laughs> nah, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, every landing is diff different from uh, the other, and uh, it's not possible to always make good landings. Uh, It just happens, and you just have to be able to analyze yourself on what you did wrong, so you won't do it wrong the next time, and now I'll just announce it while leaving the traffic pattern. DJ Alpha Kilo verlässt die Platzrunde Richtung Westen, schön Tag noch. Alright, Dienstlagen is now just straight ahead. We left the uh, traffic pattern already, fuel power off, landing light off. And the rest is as it is. It can again lean a little bit to save some fuel. And we're again climbing to uh, 2,100 feet. I like to fly some hot altitudes because everyone is flying at 2,000 feet or 2,500 feet. But just to minimize the risk of running into someone, I'll just choose the altitude that not everyone will choose. All right, we reach 2,100 feet. Ooh, actually the aircraft is well out of trim. I'll reduce the power. Use the RPM and lean it. And we can now lean it by just listening to it. I hope it's uh, audible on the video. If we lean it, lean it, at some point you will hear the engine running rough. Now, yeah, it's starting to run rough. Yeah, and I'll just increase the mixture a little bit to keep it running smooth. Alright, the runway of Dienstlagen is straight ahead and we are actually going to do another traffic pattern there because I wasn't satisfied with my landing in uh, in Mar. so we'll just do it one traffic pattern there, do a touch and go and then do our final landing Dienstlagen, 122 decibel 70 Hier ist wieder die Delta Echo Juliet Alpha Kilo, hallo. Jo, die Alpha Kilo, immer noch eine Person, jetzt vor und her kommend aus mal 5 Minuten im Osten zur Landung. Können wir direkt ins Entfernen auf die 26 gehen? Alpha Kilo, verstanden, mit 2 Meilen Teil auf die 26. 
Alright, he now wants us to report a two mile final for the runway as we're doing a straight in approach, so I'll just program the uh, GPS for, for it. Now we're currently five miles on the final. And let's begin the landing preparation. Fuel pump on, landing line on, car heat on. Raining and raining. And just that you don't want uh, that you aren't surprised that I'm not Going for the uh, threshold of the runway, we actually have a displaced threshold here, which is not marked on the runway, which it actually should be, according to uh, law, but it isn't, because this threshold is only uh, valid for small aircraft, single engine up to two tons, uh, sorry, single and multi, multi engine up to two tons, uh, this has mainly to do with a higher approach uh, path, so uh, that you don't that you don't create so much noise. Um, that's why I'm aiming 700 meters into the runway, where the actual displaced threshold where I'm allowed to touch down is. And it's just marked next to the runway with uh, two, uh, with uh, three white bars on each side of the runway. Uh, especially during the winter when it snows, it's <laughs> not visible at all. Alright. Delta Kilo, 2x, 1x, 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 1x
with the traffic and altitude. Now let's turn the downwind then, not lose 100 feet. <laughs> I'm getting bad. I'm supposed to know this and be able to do this. Huh. Let's see if I can get or manage one final landing that is acceptable. And as you can see here, I'm having now uh, a correction of 20 degrees or so. It's quite strong, the wind. which will be our final landing configuration, fuel pump on, landing light on, carpet is on, mixture full rich, and the prop is on high RPM. Delta Alpha Kilo, Kernflug, 2.6, Abschlusslandung. That was a nice landing. At 20. Alright, car feet off, pump off, landing light off, strokes off, collapse up. And let's now refuel the aircraft. Now to shut down the aircraft. We'll first shut down the avionics. And thereafter, uh, I'll bring the engine up to uh, around uh, 1500 RPM and then slowly lean it out to clear any foulings. Ignition off. Phew. And we're back on the ground. All right, we're done with the flying. And um, as you see, um, every landing is different. Uh, I think you'll see four landings in this video and each of it is different. Uh, two landings which 
with which I'm satisfied and two landings with uh, which I'm not satisfied, but uh, that's a process of continuous improvement and you'll never stop learning. Just a little bit about this cockpit I'm sitting in here. And you'll see it's a more uh, modern Piper cockpit compared to the A2A Cherokee, of course. And this aircraft was built in 1979. Um, the panel here is actually a remake uh, in this carbon look. I don't like it, but apparently some guys in the flying club liked it to, to get it. Um, I prefer the standard black Piper panel. Uh, this is the typical Piper yoke you'll find in nearly all of the Piper aircraft nowadays. Um, the electrical twin trim switches here, autopilot disconnect switch here and the push to talk button on the other side. Um, it doesn't have an Aztec autopilot like the um, like the uh, A2A Cherokee, but a uh, Century 2B autopilot for lateral navigation where you can select heading, navigation via the VOR receiver, Omni for GPS and then for localizer and back course localizer. And here you can switch heading on or you can just use the autopilot in the roll mode. And then the electrical trim system here uh, where you can select altitude, uh, the uh, plane can also capture glide slope or you can select a vertical speed. Um, it also doesn't feature anymore the. Uh, it also doesn't feature the uh, push and pull uh, engine controls. It features a thrust lever and uh, prop lever, mixture lever. The uh, carpet is also uh, a switch. It's not a pull push pull system, but it's actually a switch. This here is the flap lever, and it's here on the ground it's quite easy to get the flaps up or down but in the air you actually have to pull them against the airflow and you have to be careful when you release it because if I would just push down the button they would snap back in uh, and that's not healthy so you have to guide them down just to see how the system works let me see so now I pull it, pull them out. And the notches are down there. Um, also what most people don't know, the rudder trim. And what this actually does, if you look to the uh, pedals, it actually shifts the zero point position of the rudder pedals. Fuel selector is down here and it has the two positions left and right. And now if in the flight I'm switching the tanks and I'm over eagerly and I want to turn it off or I actually don't want to turn it off but I, I want to turn it further, it doesn't work. There's a stop here and only if I push it down I can turn, turn it into the off position. One last scene as we leave the aircraft. It has, doesn't have a mechanical control lock. So what we're going to do is to lock it with the seatbelt.